since I've had to put a trash can here right next to the lake so I can minimize when I'm walking on here. A couple cuts. Alright, we're getting we're getting down here to where we're getting a pretty good uh, combination back and forth getting pretty even in the middle we're gonna be flipping it up one more time and we're gonna we're gonna set it up and we're gonna cut it pretty well close to length and we're gonna hog off a little bit on both sides here and get rid of some of the weight but this mean diameter in here we still got to work on that flange and uh, we want to leave plenty of meat here to play with one so that we have uh, we, we can open up that bore make a nice true uh, fit we want to have we're going to make a press fit uh, that flange to the shaft so that we can establish a true running flange with the shaft diameter uh, because we're not going we want to minimize the amount of machining we don't want to take anything on the register but we can we can take a couple thousands on the face if we have to uh, just because that drum uh, that holds the blades is going to be rotating and we need to maintain that now I've uh, measured this in, from end to end just to, uh, you know, we want to know what size it is, but we're kind of planning out what kind of taper does our lathe have at this position here. Um, this is an older lathe and uh, it's not 100% and, and uh, there's a lot of wear in, the, in, in, in this lathe itself. And I know that it could be a thousands off different there or here. Uh, there might be a piece of dirt here or there. Um, and there's a lot of reasons why your center is not going to be running true if you set it up here back there um, so anyway we got uh, this is a four four to five mic here and we got four inches four hundred uh, and it just looks like we have about a tenth under that to four inches three ninety nine so we're micing that up which is which is called that three three uh, three hundred and 99 and we got 403 here so we got about four thousands difference so that's two thousands that we're off center on our tailstock um so we're just kind of looking at that we also we're not going to judge that on just uh, one check of a cut here and we'll be checking that a couple different times here we still got to flip this over one more time and get we'll get a longer cut uh, and we'll get down there to where we have uh feed and a tool bit pressure is going to play a difference in it as well uh, sometimes on your taper so it's not always you know we're still in the hog mode really all right we're gonna go for we're gonna go for two more cuts I like to get this down to probably 300 time in fact actually we we took a adjustment on a tailstock of two thousands before our last cut and I think uh, we took some of it out but not quite all of it out um, uh, right here four inches 303 and over here I'm uh, three inches three five so we're within a we're within a couple thousand. I think when I first measured it was like it was like 303 and 306. Uh, but you know I just I just threw it on there right now and I got at least two. What I'm doing now is I'm gonna face this and we're still in the roughing mode. So I'm kind of happy with how much we got on the diameter and we're concentric uh, pretty much on what's gonna be turning around. We're gonna be 
facing this off, put this at the chuck, and then we're going to set up the steady rest, and we're going to come in and we're going to part it off to length, and then reface and recenter drill um, the, the one in. And we're going to come in here and we're going to take some of the diameter down where the bearings are going to ride on both ends. But we're not going to take it all the way down. We want to leave some material there because after we weld that hub on there, we need material to be able to take out some of the, the run out developed by the weldment on the shaft itself so that we don't take or we take only minimum off of the the face and the register on the disc that's getting welded to this. I'm just feeding this in by hand. I'm not worried about going all the way to the center. I just want to make sure that I'm in at least inside the three inch range. Break in the outside edge, little chamfer. All right. All right. We'll get our sling and we'll turn the thing around. And at least we know that this will fit against the face of the chuck. And this little section in here that we didn't cut will be inside the bore of the chuck anyway. So it's not going to matter. down I'm gonna get the steady rest set up in here I'm just kind of giving you a glimpse out here I mean you know this is halfway through the day here most of this is already kind of melted but um, you know we had our first snowfall and uh, we had some up on the shelter you know it's it's kind of like icing all over everything we got a little bit of icicles hanging from uh, just the wind and the breeze uh, kind of melting up. Uh, insulation on the house is doing real well. You can see that that's, uh, that's not uh, too far affected from exp escaping heat uh, up around there. Maybe a little bit around the chimney there. Um, but uh, other than that, we're doing well. Uh, not ready to go for a portable welding job today. And uh, we already dethawed our truck. We had to run down and get the Sunday paper and stuff. but. Anyway, we're coming back in here where it's nice and warm, and and uh, let's see, what's the thermometer on the wall say? Uh, I don't know, it's like 82 or 82 degrees, something like that in here. That's against the wall. I also use this other thermometer here. This is one that came out of the naval yards there. A little cracked on the lens there, but it's still, it, you know, it's giving us pretty close the same indication there. And, uh, you know, that wood stove, wood stove over here in the corner, um, at 724, that thing is running. I burn green wood. Uh, it's the only way that I can heat this shop. Uh, if you let it go out at night and this mass gets cold, you have cold handles and it takes almost, almost 24 hours to get it back up to temperature. So if you're not tending your, your heat or your wood stove constantly, you will be fighting the cold. Um, and, and I've found out that you know even if you gotta set your alarm and you gotta stoke your stove, but uh, burning green wood, I'm, I found that I can keep my stove running 724. All right, taking a little break and just getting a little cooled off. Uh, we went and we found our supply uh, of uh, cam rollers and I got one out of the box here already. Um, we're going to be pulling these out. This has got a little mar, mar on it here. Also too, every once in a while I heat up something really uh, hot and I, I do a lot of heat straightening in here as well. And of course these get toast after a while. Now this set here, I'll go ahead and they're not totally wasted, uh, but they they are showing some age. And I'm going to go ahead and pull these out and I'm going to put some brand new ones in here because we're going to be starting to get to our finishing uh, steps into this shaft we're working on and we want to have 
some new rollers in here. Now, in my design, this is just basically a bar here with the welded uh, uh, flange on here and the collars on a threaded nut and there's three threaded holes in this this framework. I, I torch cut this body out and then rough milled it in the milling machine by hand and I made this base plate here and bolted it down and had this held in the three jaw chuck and was able to slide and fit and dress this piece underneath here and uh, when I get ready to build another one here shortly uh, we'll, we'll go through those steps all right so right now I'm just I'm screwing in a new cam roller now I don't bother they have they have a little hole in the back for lubrication and they have a side hole if you had a lubrication point right in the side there I squirt oil through the back side occasionally and that's how I, I lubricate them so I don't really put that little solid stop that's in there and I really ream these holes really tight so these rollers fit they fit in these arms nice and snug alright I'll pull out the next one here couple of these the uh, <clears throat> the quality of of Allen they put in there is not not all that cool I may actually have to weld something onto that one let's go ahead and let's see if we can pull this one here Good thing I got a bunch of dark chips there. Here's a little brass plug that goes in the end of here. Usually you just put it in there like that and then you tap it in and it becomes a plug. And then you use that port that you see right there. We're going to take this in and, and weld it. Weld something to that. And then rotate that out of there. Alright, we went in the other room and we heal the arc this quarter 20 grade 8 bolt uh, right into that uh, quarter inch allen socket and um, we got a little crescent wrench here and and uh, she's in there pretty she's she's pretty stout we knew that one you know the allen's not going I mean it's a piss poor allen we put in there and sometimes these cam rollers just really don't have the highest quality allen in them and uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a little bit of heat here. Just to the back side here, right around that threaded area right there. Alright, well she finally broke loose. And uh... Reach over and grab my Allen. There, crush my chair. Alright, so we really only, we ended up with one spare out of the three um, because we weren't really happy with uh, the other Allen that we took out of that one. Alright, we're going to put away our torch and we're going to let that cool and we want we want to check that fit on here uh, with it cool and not give it the false sense of temperature. Alright, so we went ahead and we went in the other room there and we grabbed some Never Seize to throw on there uh, just so that we make sure we got some lubricant in there. The other ones were pretty oily and that's why we, you know, we're always throwing oil on them outside them on the shaft around them in through the opening in the back and uh, the reason why I pick cam rollers is they do take a heavy load and uh, they are nice and precision and uh, been pretty happy with them and they always work you know they they have worked very well this is another one of those items that I built and from day one it has never given me any problem I have had to sand a little bit of this around because you can see how much uh, uh, th this is real close to that diameter so I wanted more clearance in here sometimes I've actually 
been trying to ride on a diameter with another a larger diameter behind you it's the only downfall on this um, on the next one here I want to make it so that these will mount on either side um, I still think it's better than maybe having the wheels right in the dead center uh, there's a couple different ways to go about it but this was a fairly simple design and it's proven to be efficient um, uh, just this one here basically can, is limited to four and a half inch on the diameter and that's why we went ahead and we turned the uh, rough diameter down so that I can start using this and we're gonna go ahead and get that piece in here now and we're gonna start um, with the the setup to part off what we don't need on the end procedure and this is our this is our third we went uh, we, we we turned it in the other we turned it in this direction and we flipped it we turned it in the other direction now we're flipped back this way here to go ahead and take it and part it off to length and face this and then we're ready to go so really we've we, this is the third third time we've endowed this in the lathe and we've already got a pretty true running diameter here now alright <clears throat> we've taken a light skim here and now we're taking a very light skim across there to give us a round diameter to move the steady rest up and support the shaft at this end or help support it while we plunge in about an inch, inch and whatever you know, inch and a quarter back from this edge here to go ahead and cut this bar off the length. So basically, that's just to give a round, true diameter. All right, we squared off our tool bit holder. We got that set up so that we know we're in the right uh, realm of carriage position. So we slid our steady rest up and we tighten it down in this location right here. And that's just basically because we want these wheels. Actually, we're gonna. Now that I'm, I got, I, I just lifted the top here, you know, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this back a little bit because right there, I may have moved it forward. I'm staring down at the rollers right here. All right. So to set it up, tighten up the base so you know it's mounted to the lathe. All right. Now we want to go ahead and you want to bring these rollers up and you can't just crank this in and, and then touch it or whatever. Um, and then and, and hope that, that they're in the right spot. This is a feel thing and the reason why I say feel is because I'm going to crank in pressure and I'm going to be able to stop the roller with my finger and that, that amount of pressure that I'm used to um, stopping the roller so I know that it's on the verge of rubbing and rolling. And that's where I like to run my wheels. Uh, the top one afterwards then you can, you can create a little downward pressure if you want to. But the two lower ones on the sides here our support um, for the load and uh, and, and create uh, you know the, the they're basically guiding the height of the part the one on the top is actually securing the, the tool bit pressure or the load on the tool bit no matter which side you're cutting on usually there's there's upward uh, pull of your part in relationship to the rotation and that's why the top one is holding holding actually the the load these two down here are guiding it and supporting the bottom. All right, so we're gonna give it some RPM. Now I'm, I'm reaching underneath here. I just put my finger on the roller and then I'm bringing it in and it can roll and now I can put my finger on it and stop it. It's roll, put my finger. And then I give this a little tension because sometimes that makes a difference on it. And I can still stop it. All right, now I'm locking it in with that. Now I'm coming over here and I'm doing the same thing on this side. Now I lock it. Now I bring the carriage or the, the top over. Do the same thing. I'm just bringing that down until it touches, locks it. Now we're good to go. 
that should minimize any vibration on this end here all right now uh, we still may have to lift this one more time because we're going to put our tape measure in here and we need to get from end to end and i don't know if it'll reach in here it may um so we're going to stretch that out we're going to get our dimension in here on the overall length let's see if it'll fit in here and it won't all right we just crack that we lift that all right and it was 37 and 5 8 was our overall length Okay, we're we're probably about thirty thousandths over thirty-seven and five eighths. Just there's no sense in there might be a little curve in the blade. In fact, uh, actually, now that <laughs> you never know how it's, things are going to turn out. Let's give ourselves a full sixteenth of an inch, sixty thousandths. And uh, go ahead, and we'll get her running. Retention our top roller here. We're just double checking our other two. pressure in on the top of that. I'm going to get my fan ventilation here. But you'd never be able to part off if you didn't have a steady rest out here to take the load. Some people were commenting that you can see the steady rest moving up and down. Well, you can also see this roller stop rolling because when you create the tool pressure, you're actually forcing that part up on this end slightly. But because of the restraints that I put on this, we're able to hold somewhat of the vibration and harmonics down to a minimum. We're almost into the max of the depth I have on the blade right now. Now we'll have to lengthen the blade out. We're going to measure down in and see how far we are. Okay, we're about uh, one and a quarter in. That's two and a half. And uh, we, got a, we got another two inches. So we got to go about another inch in. I gave it about an inch of, you know, I brought out the carriage about an inch, slid this in to where about an eighth of an inch off of there. So I advanced about seven eighths of an inch. There's going to be a certain amount of, of slug that we're going to leave in there. And we're going to back this out. We'll probably go ahead and hacksaw it through. Um, I'd rather go through the little bit of labor of putting the hacksaw cut across there than taking and wasting a hundred dollar blade or a ten twelve dollar insert um, at minimum um, so all right let's crank her up and we'll finish getting her in there to depth
okay that slug in the middle looks like uh, it looks like about a half an inch in width so I'm gonna go ahead and back this out right now and then we're gonna go ahead and hacksaw down through that uh, and we'll consider that complete guess I said about a half an inch um, all right so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and face that off and I just want to you know one of the things you always want to check how close you're parting off there's a real slight dish on the way in that was about where we extended that out other than that that face is pretty flat did a pretty good job All right, and our overall length ended up being, of course, we're using the butt end there, and we are a sixteenth, sixteenth thick there. All right, let's go ahead and take the uh, facing tool, and we're going to face off the end there. Let's go ahead and let's put a center drill in here now. All right, we're gonna we want a little bit bigger than that, probably at number five. I kind of like that. Same size we put in over at the uh, Sibley. We're going to go ahead and change this out to a center. We're going to move the steady rest on back and we're going to start hogging off each end for the reduction of the, the bearing diameters that we need. Uh, now we're only going to rough those diameters down. We're still going to keep the shaft in a rough shape. And then we're going to get this out of here and we're going to have to get the forge on there and start setting up on that flange and get that set up. And then from there on the forge jaw will be our turning uh, chuck for the rest of the job. Alright, we got one end of this shaft and I brought it in here because uh, my big torch set is here and I wanted to uh, use some heat here. And the reason why I, I got a hunch that this ring or this piece of this end right here that looks black from there to there is a ring. I can see machine marks down inside there like it's a, uh, it, 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 it's a diameter over this diameter here, real sharp. And I know that you don't have sharp surfaces like this on a shaft like you know the purpose or the <clears throat> the job description for the shaft requires strength and and you 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 don't have a strength when you have a sharp corner like that so i think this ring gives the bearing a seat but underneath this ring is probably a radius in this shaft and another hint is this is yellow paint going right into the 
the split line and then the other side of the split is you know no paint so it's kind of hard to mask off a situation like that all right first thing I'm gonna, because i want this thing this is evidently as tight on here and it's like pressed um i'm going to take the dimples kind of clear those out of here those are just two areas that the set screws uh, came down and pushed in. Now I'm going to take the wire wheel and I'm just going to clean this surface off of here and around here um, so that when I heat this up this thing will drop right off the end. Hopefully that's the that's you know that's the ideal situation without putting any dings, hammer, chisels, screwdrivers, any of that in there. this up on here a little bit smaller diameter and hopefully we're going to heat this up it'll swell and drop right off that makes the strength in the shaft all right and you can see that that is relieved there so that you got support here but you got your bearing support here all right and that gives the shaft strength all right now we know what the bear shaft looks like and we can go ahead and start roughing up this and the other bearing diameter so let's head back into the shop 